In this video, I'm checking out this, the iRig Pre 2, an XLR microphone interface for your iPhone, your iPad, your Android device, or even your camera. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. Now, if like me, you create on the go with your mobile device or your tablet or your camera and you want to be able to plug in XLR microphones to capture high quality audio, this could be the device for you. Now, this video will be in three parts. So if you want to jump around, there are timestamps down below. We'll be unboxing the device and letting you know the features. I'll then be doing a recording using an acoustic guitar and a couple of microphones so you can hear how it sounds. And then I'll give you my conclusion on what I think of the iRig Pre 2. Your more modern devices won't have a headphone jack, but you will be able to use a dongle. We're going to demonstrate that in this very video. If you're using an iPhone that doesn't have a headphone jack, you'll need one of these, a lightning to three and a half millimeter adapter. These are available everywhere. I recommend the genuine Apple versions. They're not that expensive and there's links to where you can pick one up in the description. If you're using an Android device or like me, an iPad Pro with a USB-C connection, you'll need a USB-C to three and a half mil adapter. And if you're looking for an audio interface that connects via a digital USB connection, the iRig Pro IO has you covered and it also allows you to connect MIDI devices and your guitar. So if you want to spend a little bit more, I recommend these. There's videos linked up there and in the description and this and all of the products we talk about in this video are linked down below as well. However, what I love about this device is the flexibility you get from being able to take this anywhere, from it being powered by two AA batteries and plugging into any device you throw it at. So let's stop talking about it and jump in and take a look at what you can do. So let's jump into the box and have a chat about the features of this little beauty at the same time. Now I've been using this for about a week. I've tested it on my iPhone and my iPad and spoiler alert, it works really well. It actually punches above its weight for an analog device. Because remember, we've got the iRig Pro IO, which is a digital device, but this one is just using our analog jack. So I've used analog interfaces before and not been super impressed. This one seems to be in a league of its own. So inside you get a couple of cards there that you can download the software from. I'm gonna be using GarageBand in this video because I love GarageBand, but here's what you get in the box. You get the device and you get a Velcro strip. There's two AA batteries included. I I've already pulled those out and throws it, thrown those in here. So let's now open this one up and take a look. Here it is, the iRig Pre 2. We've got a couple of indicator lights for our phantom power and our overall power there. And we've got a headphone jack up the top that's so we can monitor our audio. That's super useful. We need that on any audio device, especially if we're doing music. Around the back, we've just got our two AA batteries in the battery compartment there. On this side over here, we've got a direct monitor on off button and a volume dial for our audio output through our headphone jack, that's important. And on this side, we've got a gain dial for our microphone input, that's equally as important. We need to be able to set that and we can turn the device on by flicking down, there you can see it's come on. And if we flick the other light down here, this 48 volt phantom power indicator comes on and we're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in to my iPad Pro using the adapter that we showed before. So here is that adapter, we're going to plug that in and click, that's in there. So this has basically turned this into a USB-C device. And of course, if we wanted it to be lightning to our iPhone, we could have used this dongle as well. So that is it. This can now go with us wherever we go and any XLR microphone that we wanna plug in, you can just see the input there. We can plug that directly into here. And if it's a condenser mic, we can turn on phantom power. If it's a dynamic mic, we can just turn it to the regular on mode. So let's jump in and put this to the test. Oh, and I nearly forgot this also comes with it, a little Velcro strap here so you can strap it to a mic stand or to a camera if you're using it on the go. Now, it's not a very big strap, so I would probably buy a roll of the Velcro tape that I recommend, and that is also on the gear guide, which is down in the description with all of the links to all of the gear we're using here today. All right, so here is my iPad Pro. You can see I've already been doing some test recordings here. We're gonna plug in to the USB-C port and that is connected. It is as simple as that. We don't need any other power. We just need to plug some headphones into the jack here. And of course, the same method can be used for your iPhone, your Android device, or your camera. You just need the right sort of dongle if you are using a device that doesn't have a headphone jack. 
Now, because if I plug these into headphones, you won't be able to hear them here on this video, I'm actually gonna plug this into a stereo channel on my mixer. So this will do exactly the same thing as if you plugged in headphones. It just means that you'll be able to hear the stereo audio coming through this once we plug in a microphone which we are going to do right now. Here is my Audio-Technica AT2020. I'm going to plug this in to the end of the iRig 2. That goes in there. The other end is here into my microphone, and this is it. We are now ready to record, so I'm going to bring up the iPad screen here, and we're gonna record in first some acoustic guitar and then some vocals to see how this thing goes with some actual recording. Now, as you can see, I'm ready to record here. I've got my condenser microphone here pointed down at about the 12th fret, and we're gonna record some acoustic guitar. So we're going to play in and record using just the iRig Pre 2. Now, the beauty of this device is you can record in the camera app or an audio recorder, anything you like, including IK Multimedia's own recorder app. But I'm gonna use GarageBand here. We're gonna set up an instrument track here. So we're gonna tap on instrument here. We're gonna use the nice room. And you can see if I tap this mic, that it's already coming on through. So we may need to do some adjustment on those dials that you saw before, the input gain and the output, just so that we can monitor our audio here in GarageBand. Now, as I showed before, there's two ways to monitor. You can direct monitor or you can use software monitoring. Because we're recording audio here in GarageBand, I'm gonna turn on the software monitoring. And you can already hear, check one, two, that over on that microphone, I'm coming through over there. Now, what I need to do is make sure that when I'm playing my guitar, that I'm not gonna have the volume too loud. So we're going to need to play and then adjust in. So let's set up and do that now. So looking at that input meter there, we may be a little bit too low. Now the thing with an analog input is that you can change both this one here, so we can change it there. I would leave that around about the same as what it is by default and actually use the input gain here on the iRig Pre 2. So I'm just gonna grab that and turn it up. And as you can hear, as I go up, it's gonna get louder on this microphone and it's starting to peak. So what, you, what I recommend doing is making sure you're getting your volume level around about 50 to 70 percent. So let's turn this back down to about there. Check one, two, and that's going to be about right. The other thing you can hear is the noise floor on this. So it's not as good as a digital interface, but it's pretty darn good for an analog interface. So let's turn the noise, let's turn the volume up to full and take a listen to the noise floor, and then we'll dial it down. So clearly you wouldn't record this loud. But as we turn it down, you can see there, we're still getting a healthy signal. Check, one, two. In fact, still too loud. So it's pretty good. In terms of a, an analog interface, the noise floor is actually pretty good. All right, I think we're set up and ready to go here now. So we'll just turn it up a little bit more for the guitar and let's record in a guitar part here using the iRig Pre 2. All right, there you go. Let's turn that monitoring back off. So we're just over here now and uh, come back and take a look and a listen to this recording. So if we hit play on just this track. So the actual noise in between there, apart from me sort of shuffling around here with my, my guitar, is actually pretty good. And you can even see there with the waveform that we're not getting a whole lot of interference or staticky noise or any background noise in there apart from the natural background noise. So let's um let's just do another let's do another Yeah, let's do another guitar part here and layer this one up. So we're just going to tap here and duplicate and uh, let's add a second guitar part to this track. All 
right. Not too bad there at all. We didn't have the monitoring on that time. So you wouldn't have heard that apart from through this mic over here, but that's okay. If we come back out here, we can now play both of these together. So uh, let's uh, hit play on these and see what our two guitar tracks together sound like. Once again, I'm pretty impressed by this in terms of picking up the guitar sound without picking up too much of the background noise. And obviously, you, you, with using a microphone with an acoustic guitar, you can play around with the tone and adjust it. But in terms of just being able to quickly set it, quickly get a good sounding guitar tone, I'm pretty darn impressed. Let's switch over now and try some vocals, shall we? So this time we're going to set up a microphone track. We'll just go into our standard voice setting here with the monitor button. Check. So now we're going to be way too loud, right? Because uh, we need to turn down that input gain because we're going to be singing. You say that thoughts and prayers are... So we're going to be singing. We need to make sure it's turned down a little bit more than our guitar. And this is where this actually has some amazing gain control here because if we turn it all the way down... It's coming through really softly there. Yeah, you can see on the screen. And even if you're up at number one or number two, you've got a heap of gain here. It means that you're not going to get a whole lot of noise in your recordings. And I'm pretty darn impressed by that, I must say. The other thing is I also have the headphone up all the way just so that you can hear me through the mixer. If I turn that down, you can hear that the noise floor is even lower than that. So it's hard to represent here. At the end, I'll play back what I create here and you'll be able to hear exactly what it sounds like. But for now, uh, let's record a couple of vocals, shall we? You tell me that thoughts and prayers may be enough. But darling, I know it's just not. All right, first vocal recorded there. We'll come back out here. Once again, just looking at it, you can tell it's pretty darn good. Let's uh, let's play these together. We might need to mix the volumes a little bit, but let's hit play on this one. You tell me that thoughts and prayers may be enough. But darling, I know it's just... Right? Pretty darn cool. So this is with a condenser microphone using phantom power. Now, in case you want to see this in action with a dynamic mic, let's switch this up and plug in a dynamic microphone and record a harmony vocal to go along with this one. So I've swapped out the Audio-Technica AT2020 for this, the AKG D5. Now this is a dynamic microphone, meaning it doesn't need phantom power. So what we need to do is grab the iRig and turn it from phantom power mode just to regular on mode. You can see there that our 48 volt red light goes off, but our green light's still on, so we're still recording. We'll pop that one back down there and uh, let's get ourselves set up here to record. So we're gonna duplicate out this vocal track. We'll hit duplicate there and uh, we'll probably need to adjust our input gain on this one because here's our microphone and it's going to be lower signal because your dynamic mics are not going to send as much audio through. So we're gonna come back to here. Let's turn monitoring on. Check, one, two. And we'll turn this microphone off and just jump over here and yeah, you can hear that it's way, way down, right? So we're gonna need to turn that up. Check, whoa, that's way too loud. You can hear that clipping. By the way, if you see the red and you hear that sound, you're clipping. So turn it back on down. Check, one, two. You wanna be 50 to 70%. Round about that zone, yeah? Check, one, two. Okay, I think we're good. Let's uh, get ourselves set up here to record a harmony backing vocal to this original song. You tell me the thoughts and prayers may be enough But darling, I know it's just not true All right, that is done. We'll come on back here. 
there you go. Again, with the dynamic mic, we're getting the same sort of signal through here, the same sort of quality, and again, very low noise floor. Again, for an analog device, and you can check the prices of this thing, it is cheap. Compared to your digital interfaces, this thing is cheap and super flexible. So what I'm gonna do, we'll just remove the start of these because we don't need all of those bits. I've given myself a bar intro here to make sure that everything's working the way it should be. We'll turn down that backing harmony vocal and uh, without much mixing, without much fuss, let's just see what we've recorded here with our acoustic guitar and our vocals. You tell me the thoughts and prayers may be enough. But darling, I know it's just not true. Right? Pretty darn cool. Now, yes, it's not going to have the super low noise floor that you're going to get from something like the iRig Pro I.O. or another USB interface, but we're talking about a half, if not a third of the cost. So I think that's pretty darn good. Uh, let's jump out now because uh, I've, pr prior to this video, I recorded the entire eight bar loop of this song, including all the backing vocals and uh, some extra guitars here. So let's finish off by taking a look and a listen at exactly how that sounds. So here is our final track. We've got four acoustic guitars and five separate vocal tracks here. We've got a bunch of harmony vocals in here, as well as those original vocals we recorded there. And we've added a couple more guitars in here as well. So you'll be able to hear from this that if you're recording a demo, if you're doing an acoustic singer-songwriter kind of song, this device is going to be pretty darn cool for you. Let's take a listen to this uh, eight-bar loop. You tell me the thoughts and prayers may Darling, I know it's just not true. So there you go. What do you think? I'm actually pretty blown away by this little device. I never really thought that an analog preamp, an analog audio interface would have this level of quality, this low noise floor and the ability to record such good quality audio. Now, full disclosure, IK Multimedia did send this to me, and I did say to them, I will check it out, and if it's something I think my viewers will dig, I will do a review video and put it out here. That's why I did some testing before I even did this video, because I'm actually super impressed by this. I think if you are on a budget, and you are looking to get into recording, and you want something that can connect all of your XLR microphones, and have the ability to dial in the gain, to have headphone monitoring output, and run it all on a couple of AA batteries. And these things apparently last up to 20 hours with a dynamic and up to seven hours if you're using that phantom power. So the iRig Pre 2, I'm a fan. I'll definitely be throwing this in my kit bag for future use here on Studio Live today. Thanks for watching. Once again, all the links to this gear and all the other gear I recommend is down in the description. Happy creating and I'll see you next time.